Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, I'm Nancy. I'm Ross, nice to meet you. You ready to explore the woods? Definitely. Excellent, all right, let's go. So, uh, spring is all about like the young growth. Uh, from a food perspective, what we're looking for are all the young succulent sort of leaves. Right. This is hawthorn. Okay. Um, and at the moment, the leaves have just started to come out. But we can take a few of these, and the plan is to cook up um, some trout over the fire. Uh, so just take a few. And when we're foraging, it's good to, rather than stripping this one little tree, uh, we'll just sort of move along and get a little bit from each one. Yeah. So we're not killing off one as it's sort of struggling to, to get all the sunlight to give power and energy. All right. Yep. All right, we'll pick up some water from here. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But you have to always assume that water that you find out is, you know, out in the wild, you have to assume that it's not safe to drink. All right, let's carry on and see what's up in these woodlands just up here. So what we've got here uh, is wood sorrel, and this grows in nice dark woodland, uh, and it's a really good edible. So if you want, it looks a little bit like clover, those, those leaves, but clover has like a, a white triangle on the leaf. So if you try chewing that, but chew it at the, like with your front teeth and tell me what, what it tastes like. It's quite sour. Yeah? Yeah, quite like lemon. Yeah, like lemon. Um, it always reminds me of like apple skin. Yeah, yeah. Um, the texture of that as well. Yeah. So this is actually um, a really good tasty edible. Uh, and we're going to add it to the, the fish because it gives a nice sort of citrusy um, flavour. Okay. okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Should we head on? Yeah. So what we need to do is um, gather all these little sticks for fire lighting. Now the trick to tell if it's going to be good for fire lighting is when you bend it, it snaps nice and cleanly like that. That tells me that there's not any moisture in there, it's still not living. So the drier the better? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So this is going to be one of the first stages we put on the, the fire. And they want to be about matchstick thin and try and keep them as long as possible. So the longer the better, because it means we can control them when they're on the fire much easier. So we need to make sure they're nice and dry and as long as possible. And in this weather, because it's nice, it's, you know, it's not pouring with rain, we can probably get away with a bundle about this big, but in really wet weather, sometimes I'm putting bundles on that are, you know, you, they're called hug size bundles. <laughs> uh, but we can get away with a little bit less now. And we can also get these slightly larger ones for the next stage up. So this is our first stage and the slightly larger, like pencil thick sticks, which still snap nice and cleanly. They'll be our second fuel. There we go, that looks good. Yeah. It's a good bundle. All right, let's head back to camp. So this is a fallen ash tree, and often on ash, you get uh, these. So this is a uh, fungus, although it doesn't look like a fungus that we know, like the traditional toadstool. Yeah. Uh, this is called crample or daldinia concentrica. You can see all those concentric rings oh, on yeah. the inside. That's like a tree. Yeah, and this is really good for fire lighting. So you could put a spark onto that and it would start to glow. Uh, or it acts like a piece of charcoal. So when we get our ember later, we can put it onto this and it will 
mean it'll burn for much longer and much hotter. So pop that in your pocket. And here we've got a, a big bank of dog's mercury. So it's an ancient woodland indicator, so it shows that this area has been forested for a long time. Uh, and it's not an edible, it's actually quite poisonous, but it comes up in the spring um, and carpets the ground like this. The only use that I found from it is it can make a, a dye. So often with plants, they've either got a, a food use, medicinal use, or they're good for some kind of utility. And this one is uh, purely uh, a utility, so making a yellow dye. Okay. Uh, there's some other plants in there as well, but mainly dogs make good. All right. Yep. Right, uh, so this is the shelter. We started this with, a, with another group on a course. Uh, we've got a bit of work to get it finished. Yeah. But uh, what I was thinking we'd do is uh, make a fire. Yeah. So we'll make a fire out here. And it's far enough away from the shelter that it's not gonna catch the shelter on fire, but also will benefit from a, you know, a bit of heat and light from the fire as well. First off, put down a layer of sticks on the ground. So if you feel that ground, it feels quite cold yeah. and damp. So by putting a platform of sticks down, it does quite a few things. So yeah, that's it. Just any of those sticks. And this protects it from the cold ground initially. It allows air to travel in underneath and build the fire up. But also because all these sticks are dead, it means that these will start to burn and then that gives a really good heart to the fire, makes it much stronger. However, I decided it'd be quite good to make life a little bit challenging for us. And rather than just get a lighter, I thought we'd uh, make fire in the traditional method. So this is just some dry grass. We're gonna go with a bow drill method. So, the first step we need to do, just clear this bit of ground, is we just need to burn, it's called burning in. So it's burning this circumference, this face, into the, the baseboard there. And then once we've got this black, we're gonna cut a notch in. And then that's where our, our ember's gonna form. And then you'll go take hold of the end of the bow. We're just going to go backwards and forwards like that, okay? We're going to start off nice and slowly, and the aim is to use the full length of the bow so we can be as efficient as possible. Okay, so to you, and then back, that's it. Nice and slow to begin with. I've taught probably thousands of people how to do this over the years on courses. And the reason people fail to make fire is often because they fail to prepare. So it's much better, especially when the weather's really bad, to spend an hour preparing everything, trying to find all the dry materials making sure everything's absolutely perfect. Okay, and stop there. There's our ember. See it smoking away there? Yeah. Okay. See it glowing? Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 
Now, I'm going to tap it into the middle here. It's just, you have to be very gentle with it at this stage. You want it to be nice and compact in there. And then you're going to fold it round, round like the edges, if you imagine the embers where my thumb is. Yeah. And you're going to blow onto that nice and steady. There we go. Great. I'll take that down there. I'll just turn it upside down because fire always likes to burn upwards. And we'll take our sticks that we gathered earlier. And we'll just place those over the top. All right. High five. Good job. We need to prepare the fish, so I'm just going to gut it and that means running the, the knife all the way along its belly, like so. Now all those guts we're just going to throw away and the uh, foxes are going to eat well tonight. You can see all those very fine little ribs already yeah. sticking out on the trout. So traditionally this was used, this technique was used for salmon, uh, which are much tougher fish. The head, and I can take hold of the, the spine and the head of the fish and slowly separate them out and then I can cut round cut round here these sticks which act as a brace the holes. Slide it into our sticks. Like so. Perfect. So just use the root to bind. So I'm just dress it a little bit and there we go. So that's ready to, to cook over the fire. If I can hold my hand for about three seconds before it gets too hot to pull away, that's about the right distance that I want to be cooking at. We'll spend most of the time on, on the flesh side and then the last five minutes we'll just flip it over and put it skin side down just to crisp up the skin and make sure it's cooked all the way through. Okay, let's see how, how it's doing. Oh, there we go, that's got a nice colour to it. Yeah, what we'll do is just let the heat go through the, the back side, through the skin, and just finish it off there for a couple more minutes. Well, that's looking good. And then we've got the wood sorrel from earlier on. So once it's done, we'll just put it on our, our dining room table, <laughs> which is here, uh, sprinkle some wood sorrel on it, and go from there. There we go. And this is the wood sorrel we collected earlier. So it's nice just to, this has a really lemony, citrusy sort of taste to it. All right, tuck in. So there shouldn't be any bones, but just be careful in case they're out. That's really nice. Yeah? That's really like fresh taste mm. as well. Yeah, it picks up the, the taste of the smoke from the fire. Yeah. And the leaves do add to it. Yeah. So just with a little bit of knowledge and a knife, we were able to, to produce this, this meal, you know, cook it really quickly, no matches or anything like that, just a couple of pieces of wood to make the fire. Yeah. It's great, it's such a sense of freedom. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I've it's learnt, been a pleasure. I've learned so much today, but it's a bit dark, so I think I'm gonna head off. Okay, no okay. problems. And if you do get lost in the woods, you know you know how to make a fire and catch a trout and things. Yeah, definitely. So, great. Thank right, you very much. You. And you. All right, Thank safe trip you. out. Bye. See you later, mate.